Tarot Virgin has to be one of the coolest characters and most interesting characters in the Stormlight Archive. Let's talk about some of the secrets he's holding and what he's up to. Hey guys, it's Christian from Lost in Discovery. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be jumping into a new Stormlight video as part of my countdown series to Rhythm of War. I'm sorry to alienate some of my audience, but again, this is spoilers all the way up to Oathbringer, so if you're not up to date, you have to leave this video now for fear of being spoiled. If you haven't started Rhythm of War preview chapters yet, you can watch this video. Alright, let's do it. So, what I want to do today is examine what Tarabangian's up to, but firstly, I want to do it with the knowledge that we learnt about him towards the end of Oathbringer. Let's look back at some of the things we learnt about him at the end of Oathbringer, which will give us a whole new perspective of what he was doing in The Way of Kings, Words of Radiance, and even further onto the series. I think you'll find it quite interesting. So in talking to Dalinar at the end of Oathbringer, he kind of reveals a lot of why he he's doing what he's doing. And this is what he says to Dalinar in that scene. There's a woman at Carbranth, he said. She goes by the name Dover, but we think she is Batar Elin, a herald. She told us the desolation was approaching. He looked to Dalinar. I had nothing to do with the death of your brother, but once I heard of what incredible things the assassin did, I sought him out. Years later, I located him and gave him specific instructions. Okay. That's a lot. Let's talk about what all that was about. The first thing to note is that he's very sympathetic to Dalinar about the death of Gavilar. This is because he was very good friends with Gavilar. He mentions this earlier in the series that he was close with him and that Gavilar actually confided in Tarabangian about the visions he was getting, about having to unite Alethkar or just unite them. These were the visions that was soon given to Dalinar in the series. So we knew he was sympathetic to what Gavilar was trying to achieve, whatever that may be. So he was warned that a desolation was coming by someone who he presumed was a herald. He's like, I've got to act on this. I have to help save humanity. So what he did was seek out the Night Watcher. And we know through Dalinar that when you ask for for something from the Night Watcher, you might not get it exactly as you're imagining it. It's kind of like making a deal with the devil where you kind of get what you want in a weird way, but they take it kind of literally or rhetorically or strangely in a twisted way that kind of messes you up. This is what Tyrajan says about his interaction with the Night Watcher. His inner thoughts go like this. He'd begged for compassion and acumen and he'd gotten them, just never at the same time. And I think that perfectly encapsulates what's happened to Taravangian here. So he was granted great intelligence, but also great compassion and kind of emotional intelligence, you could say. Some days he's incredibly smart and incredibly prophetic, and other days he's very emotional and almost childlike in this kind of pure human experience where he just sees things at face value, almost like how a child would. This is where the diagram was born. So with this brilliant intelligence he has gotten from the Night Watcher, he created the diagram and it's basically this day where he was just absolutely peaking. He was so smart and what he did was just write all over his quarters and write in drawers, write on the walls, write anywhere possible. This has created almost like a cult around it. and. Few people know about it, but there is a group also known as the Diagram, not confusing at all, but they are serving to kind of have Taravangian's magnum opus just come to life. Taravangian's work of art come to life. They have transcribed everything that he wrote that day and they're just like, we need to make this happen because it's going to save humanity from the desolations. <laughs> and that is freaking awesome. He has a whole crew with him who are helping him do this. He wakes up in the morning and they kind of test him. Are you smart or are you dumb today? If you are smart, go ahead, be the king. You should be fine, but we'll still watch you. And if you wake up kind of dumb, we'll take care of things. You just stay in bed, okay, buddy? So <laughs> they are just all working to see this diagram come to fruition. It's all in the hope of saving humanity with some dark twists that we will talk about soon. So why don't we go back to the Way of Kings and start looking at it with this knowledge we now have. I think you'll be surprised at some of the 
revelations and little secrets that you can pick up on from this. Okay, so in The Way of Kings we meet Taravangin through Shallan's point of view and he's just a cute little old man king at Carbranth, well liked by Yasna, and Yasna was cool so I was like, oh this guy must be alright and Shallan thought he was very kind of sweet so I was like, yeah, nice. But do you remember that very initial chapter where his granddaughter was stuck behind that giant boulder and he needed Yasna to soul cast that boulder away to release his granddaughter? Yeah! That was totally a trap. So Brandon says himself on the website, So Taravangian set this entire thing up. He wanted to see Yasna's soul caster in action. He had the resources to get through that rock if he'd wanted to, but he wanted to see Yasna work, and he wanted to have an opportunity to interact with her. His eyes have been on her for a while. So it's kind of unclear if he thought she was radiant, or becoming a radiant, or an actual surge binder without needing a soul caster, but he's onto it. He is not what you expect him to be. Following on from that, it's not until the end of The Way of Kings that you see that he's been pulling the strings for Seth pretty much the whole book, knocking off the leaders, Yarkaved and all across Alathkar, because of what he wrote in the diagram. And you notice that all the epigraphs throughout and all the death rattles throughout The Way of Kings are from him draining the blood of people in this freaky hospital. The reasons for that we won't get into now, but they are basically kind of prophetic of the future in some way. So he's kind of just knowing that all this is quite violent and very awful, but he's like, well, what are a few deaths to save hundreds of thousands of lives? So this is what makes him so good because he, you kind of hate him for what he's doing, but he's a sympathetic villain. I, it's not as simple to call him a villain, but he's like a sympathetic character that does horrible things. So those are the best ones, I think, because if you just have straight up good or straight bad, it's kind of unbelievable. If you have a character that's doing awful things, but you kind of can see where they're coming from, I feel like that's a much better reading experience and much more interesting reading experience. That's where we are with him in Way of Kings, but Words of Radiance is where where it starts to get pretty real with Tarot of Engine. In Words of Radiance, we start to get quotes from the diagram throughout the book. Some are like normal quotes that you see at the beginning of chapters. Some are a little weird because all the words are put together and they don't have spacing. So that's kind of weird. And then you get to the ones that are like numbers. It's just numbers all in a row for like three or four lines. The amazing Stormlight Archive fans, I swear every time you think someone couldn't figure something out there is like a fandom or a section of a fandom that always pulls through. These have been kind of decoded. Some of the numbers were purely just dates predicting high storms. One in particular, which I'll show you now, translate to something a little bit interesting. This one translated to Hold the secret that broke the Knights Radiant. You may need it to destroy the New Orders when they return. It's strange because he has made this diagram to save humanity against the Desolation. This is telling him that he needs to destroy or disband the Knights Radiant who have been said to save humanity in the past. But at the same time, we also know that the Knights Radiant also abandoned their Earths and killed their Spren back in the day. So does Terra Engine know something that we don't know? Because, you know, Scylla said it, Patton has said it, like, you guys are gonna kill me one day, to Shallan and Kaladin. So maybe he knows more than we do. Who knows what Brandon has up his sleeve for that portion. I thought it was an interesting tidbit to mention. So another really interesting moment in Words of Radiance is after Seth attempts to kill Dalinar, meets our boy Kaladin, <laughs> and Kaladin puts up much more of a fight than I think anyone expected. But not only that, he kind of reveals himself as a surge binder. Why this shakes Seth so much is, it seems that basically he was speaking about the Knights Ra Radiant returning. This is like a bad thing to do with the Shin. They named him Truthless. That whole thing we don't know about yet, but that seems like it. So he's kind of having a crisis of faith and a crisis of like, have I been following this Oath Stone for nothing? If these Knights Radiant exist, if these surge binders exist? He freaks out. He goes to Tower Engine and he's like, dude, They've got a search binder. What the hell? This is very interesting what Taravangian thinks to himself after Seth says this. He thinks, So Seth knew about Yasna. Has she faked her death then? As he'd suspected? 
detonation. And it's like, oh, Tarvaj and you sneaky boy. He totally <laughs> knew about Yasa, and that just supports that why he was setting her up to see her soul cast in front of him. Like, he is on it with this diagram, man. Very, very interesting. And then he starts kind of theorizing with his team, like, who is it? Who is it? What about Shalan? What about that girl she had there? And he notes that they didn't really expect Shalan, and she's like, Hmm, was Yasna training her or was it her older brother before he died? So that just raises questions about Harlan, her other brother who Kaladin killed. Ah, oh my god, okay. We're just getting, it's just like there's too much. Let's stay focused. Let's stay focused on the task at hand. All right, let's move on to Oathbringer. Now, Oathbringer is where Tara Vengeance starts to join the main cast of the story. And that's because Dalinar is finally, like they've opened the Oath Gates, all the Kind of factions of Rosha are coming together and he's trying to unite them as best he can. And for some reason, for whatever reason, as part of the diagram, Dal Dalinar can't, like, Dalinar's not part of this, according to Tara Vajin's little book he's written. <laughs> and he's like, dude, Dalinar has got to go, hence, you know, sending Seth to kill him. Tara Vajin is still planning to hit Dalinar's Achilles heel and get rid of him because he feels like it's for the greater good and he even thinks to himself like Gavilar man I'm so sorry I don't want to kill your brother but I have to. How he does that is he's, he kind of shares the revelation that the Voidbringers were the humans in the first place and it kind of breaks up Dalinar's entire coalition with everyone and he screws everything up and he kind of almost not fully but he kind of spills his master plan to Dalinar and throughout his examination of what's happening in the diagram the examination of what's happening in the world and seeing Odium's forces he's kind of resigned to the fact that they are doomed and humanity is going to die so instead of saving humanity from the desolations his goal becomes a bit more focused and he's like we've got to save what we can cue Odium rocking up into Tara Vengeance's life and kind of pulling him into, I don't know what it is, a vision? Is it a vision? Is it real? I don't know. But he is talking to Tara Vengeance as he's thinking about this. So Odium's like, Tara Vengeance, mate, well done. This diagram, pretty cool thing you've done here. And by the way, I'm paraphrasing, but it's like not much unlike how I'm speaking now. He's pretty much like, pretty good plan, dude. Pretty good. I like it. I like what you're doing. Yeah, so Odium's like, I respect the diagram, and he's like, do you want to see what I can see? And he basically like shows Taravanj and Infinity, like, flexes really, really hard and shows him like, dude, I'm a god. Diagram's pretty cool, but I know more. But Taravanj spots some gaps in Odium's knowledge. What are those gaps? Taravanj thinks to himself, it's Renarin. Renarin is the gap. And it's like, oh my god, if Renarin could get any more intriguing, he just did somehow. He's like, oh, you need me. And Odin's not very keen to admit it, but yeah, it seems like he does to some degree. So they make a deal. And the deal goes like this. Taravangin is like, Odium, if you spare Carbranth, everyone who lives there and continues to live there, that's enough for me. And I'll give you the diagram. Odium's cool with that, but he says, I also need that honor blade you have. I think I'll be needing that. If you're a bit confused or don't remember what that honor blade is, I'll explain it to you right now. This honor blade is the blade that Seth was using throughout the series. Now honor blades are different to shard blades. Honor blades belong to the heralds and if you hold an honor blade you get the powers of surge binding that that herald had. That's why Seth could do all the cool stuff he was doing throughout the books. Seth had that honor blade, Kaladin defeated Seth, Kaladin got the blade, Dalin I gave it to Bridge for to protect, and then Taravangians, one of his minions, someone who serves the diagram, used Tef's Bridge for uniform to sneak in and steal that honor blade and give it back to Taravangian. I hope that made sense. So that blade is now in the possession of Odium as well. I'm presuming that he's going to give that to his champion to fight Dalinar and his people. So yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of stuff happening with Taravangian. One little tidbit extra that I will mention is that Taravangian also has a nice Radiant serving with him. It seems that he got people from the diagram to try and bond with Spren to become Radiant. The Radiant that is working with him is called Malata and she seems like a bit of a black sheep and she has no problems kind of working against the rest of the Radiants and letting 
all the Parshmen and all the Parshendi and all the fused into Urethru at the end of Oathbringer. So she's really fine serving the Diagram, which is interesting because we haven't really seen an evil or like a bad guy Knight's Radiant. So something else to think about with Tyramandian. I hope this was interesting to you because I find Tyramandian so damn intriguing. I love how this makes rereads just so incredibly rich, especially with his scenes. And I feel like all of this is going to be so significant in Rhythm of War. And I really want to hear from you guys. Having heard this, and lots of it you probably knew, maybe even all of it, what do you think this means for the next events in the story? What's it going to mean that he has this honor blade? What's it going to mean that Odium has the diagram? So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for sticking to the end if you're here. And I also want to thank all those people who have been subscribing to me lately. We just went over 400 subscribers, which is insane. I did not expect that many subscribers. So it's very exciting. And thank you so much for sticking around, for leaving a very lovely comments. New video every Saturday and hopefully some more extra ones as well. Hope you guys all had a great week and I will see you all in the next video.